fab. I think live on Zoom now, so people might be starting to come in and I'll count us in for the Facebook live now. So if you're ready to go, Katie. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Great. I'll go live on Facebook now. Brilliant. I think we're live and ready to go. Hi everyone that's joining us. It's um, Eleanor here from Freshional Beauty. Today we have a brilliant demo lined up for you. Um, it's hosted by Nail Tech Katie Barnes, who's the owner of Katie Barnes Training Academy. And today she's going to be showing us how to achieve a really crisp small line with gel systems. Thank you, Katie, very much for joining us. It's great to have you. Hi Elena. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us. So, uh, so so yeah, I'm going to show you uh, how to create a crisp smile line with the gel systems. So we're going to use um, cover a couple of different gel products, including gel paints, coloured gels and gel polishes. Um, and you can work along with us or you can just take notes and practice in your own time. Amazing. And if you've got any questions for Katie as well, please do send them in because we'll have a QA and a um, afterwards as well. So please do send any questions in and I'll hand over to you, Katie. Thank you. So I'm just going to change my camera over uh, to the um, demo. So I'm just going to go blank for a quick moment and I shall see you at the demo desk. Um. You don't want my ceiling. Um, okay. Sorry. Oh, excuse my technology. There we go. Okay. Okay, great. Hopefully that's nice and clear for everybody. And um, so I've just got here a couple of nails prepped. So I've used um, the cover pink tips already and I like working on these especially if I'm doing something like smile lines. It just gives me the base colour that I already want and it saves me time when I'm practicing. When you're do working on nail tips it's important that you make sure that you buff the nail first with a spongy buffer or you use a matte top coat. This gives a much smoother base to work on when you are then painting and your gel will be able to adhere properly. We're going to use a couple of different mediums today and I'm going to just talk you through these mediums first. So you can create smile lines using gel polish, a variety of uh, gel paints and it's completely up to you with which brand that you prefer to use. Every single brand including those um, that offer gel paints they will all have slightly different consistencies. And when you're working this, it's important to work with the right consistency for you. I'm just going to place a bead of each different product on this um, nail art tile, just so you can see the different consistencies. So first of all, it's the gel polish. I'm just going to place this down on the tile. You can see that this is quite thin viscosity. The thinner viscosity, what actually happens is you will find that it will be a lot trickier to get the perfect smile line. This is because you will end up needing more layers to work with to get the colour that you desire. This is one branch gel paint. When you're using pot gels, it's important to 
stir it with a spatula or an orange wood stick. And this is so you can really mix up the pigment and you won't get translucent patches. Just going to scoop a little bit up the side and roll it on to the tile. You can already see that that product is a thicker viscosity than the gel polish. I'm just cleaning my spatula. I'm now going to another brand's gel polish, uh, gel paint, sorry. And I'm just going to do exactly the same. Again, you can see where it's sticking to my spatula more, so you can see that that is the stiffer consistency. Finally, I'm going to use this art gel, another gel paint. This comes in a tube, so I can just squeeze this straight on to the tile. So if we look here, we can see the different consistencies. You can see this final one that I've done was a lot stiffer than the first one. You need to work out which consistency works better for you. Um, when I'm creating smile lines, my personal favourite is this first gel, po uh, gel paint that I used. Gel polish, when I'm doing the first technique I will demonstrate, is a little bit too thin viscosity. and I find that there is a better method to use when doing gel polish to create your smile lines. You can, if you're using the same brand, also mix these two. So if this was um, the same brand as this final one, I could mix those two to get the perfect consistency I want. With consistencies, what you also need to take into account is the temperature that you are working in. The viscosity will be a lot thinner and a lot runnier if it is warm. If it's cold, the viscosity is going to be a lot stiffer. So you can take this into account when you are working with your gel products. Again, to choose the most suitable one for the temperature that you are working. So I'm just going to take my nail tips again and I'm just going to use the one for now. I'm just going to apply a little bit more of the thinner viscosity coloured gel onto my tile. I'm only doing one so I don't need a huge amount. And I've just applied that onto this. You can use a piece of uh, form backing, you can use a, um, a kitchen tile, um, this is just a blank nail art card which I like to work with when I am doing um, uh, gels because I can just clean it, wipe it clean and reuse it. So when I am working with a gel paint to create a smile line Let's imagine this could be an acrylic or a gel enhancement that I'd created in cover pink and I've just buffed up. It could be a gel polish nail and I could have done the cover pink in gel polish and I've buffed it and then I could use gel paint um, or even a builder gel. So there's lots of different ways that you can then do this technique. I'm now going to take a fine line brush. It's your personal preference to which you do prefer. So this one, for example, is quite a short fine line brush. This is the Hazel Dixon Precision Wand Brush. And this is my favourite one to work with this technique. A lot of nail technicians do enjoy using a longer fine line brush or an even shorter one. And that is your personal preference to what you like to use. So now I'm going to take this nail tip and I'm going to roll my brush through the gel. Okay. The first thing I'm going to create is a straight line across the free edge. So I'm just going to turn this on its side as I find it a little bit easier. You need to 
master the angles in which you hold your brush. The straighter we hold it like this, the finer li the line we create. The flatter we hold the brush, the wider the line that we create. So you just need to remember this to see what kind of line that you want to create. This doesn't need to be extremely neat. It's just really a bit of a guideline to start with. So I'm just coming across like this and creating a rough line on that free edge. Don't worry if you have a little bit less product on one side than the other, we will fill this in further later on in the demonstration. I'm just rolling my brush through again to pick up a little more product. And now I'm going to divide this free edge. So I want to split it into thirds and create a slightly larger third in that middle zone. From here, we will then meet up with the corner point of the natural nail. So whilst we're working on, on the nail tip, we don't have that corner point. But if we were working on an actual nail, by the corner point, I would mean here. So that is where we start when we create a smile line from the corners. We are just going to imagine where it is on the nail tip. So from here, I'm going to come in a straight line to meet up, roll through the paint again. When we're working on a tip, we can just turn this and the same side. Again these are just guidelines so you can alter this and change this afterwards. Now I've just rolled my brush through the paint again and I'm just going to use a circular swiping motion and just pass this line to just pass this line to round off the small line and soften that square look that we've currently got. Okay. Now again, I'm going to roll my brush through and we're now going to start from our guideline and drag through. You'll notice that I'm not curing as I'm working and this is important because if we cure as we're working, what happens is we will end up with a patchy looking uneven finish. So I'm just pulling this through. You'll also see that the line I've created has stayed nice and sharp and that is the difference between using something that is a slightly thicker viscosity than the thinner gel polish. The gel polish tends to give a slightly um, bleeding effect of, of the gel and it will give a slightly blurry finish. The gel paint which is stiffer will stay where you pit it and that will create your crisp smile line. You can see it's not running as I'm working so you can take your time. You don't have to worry if you've got a client, you've got your five nails there and you're having to rush and try and get it before it's running and going in the lamp. I'm just applying a little bit more here. Okay, and then pulling down. I'm now going to go to this side and then work to the middle again, but you can work all the way across if you wish. You don't have to just use white, you can use a variety of colours to suit. I will also show you it with a black and that gives quite a nice little art look without having to worry too much about being particularly arty. Okay, so that's that general there. Now what we can do if we feel it needs, we can just use our brush to just tidy up and sharpen any of those lines. 
When you're doing this, remember the angles that I showed you earlier, depending where you want to fill in. Check your corner points are lined up. And bring one down further if it needs it. If you feel that you've got too much product as you're working, what you can do is just roll any excess off your brush and bring your brush through like this. What that would do is take any excess product off, but it will self-level a little bit and fill in any of those gaps. If you feel that you haven't got enough pigment with one coat, and this will depend and be trial and error with different brands, you may then want to cure this and then do a second layer. Before this cures, if you aren't happy with the crispness of the smile line and you feel that you want to tidy it up, there are several different things that you can use before you cure it. You can take a nail polish cleanup pen like this, dip it in some acetone, and use that to tidy up the smile line before you cure it. Alternatively, rather than using one of these pens, you could use your choice of cleanup brush. So here I've got a selection, this is Nero Merlot Zero, and it's quite a flat head brush. And then this one is a one stroke brush. And a lot of nail technicians favor this kind of brush when cleaning up smile lines, because as you see, it mirrors the smile line as we twist it round. Once you're then happy with this, you can cure it in the lamp and follow your manufacturer's instructions for curing time. This product is um, one minute in a UV lamp. So just as that is curing, I'm now going to take a nail wipe and I'm just going to clean my brush in a twirling motion to remove any excess product. This nail will be finished with a shiny gloss top coat and that cures in the lamp for 30 seconds. I'm going to create another, um, another smile line using the black art gel which is a slightly thicker viscosity gel after for you and I actually find when you're using different colours rather than white you can work with a slightly thicker viscosity. The reason I didn't choose the thicker vis thickest viscosity with the white is because when I'm working with it what I find sometimes as I'm pulling it out it can leave lines as I'm using my brush. This is where when I suggested you could mix the slightly thinner viscosity this will make that self level a little bit more and you won't need to worry about that effect. However when using it with colours I don't feel that that happens so I prefer to use this different viscosity for that. So here is the smell line. Now sometimes when you have created a smell line, more so if you have had to apply more than one coat of white, you will end up with a small dip in this zone here. As you can see, this one hasn't got it. If you do, all that you need to do is when you apply your top coat, apply an additional bead there first, walk from side to side, pull it over, and that will just fill that gap. Then we can come over the rest of the nail. Cap the free edge, and that's ready to cure for 30 seconds. So as that nail cures, I'm now going to demonstrate the black smile line for you. So I'm going to take my next nail tip that I've already pre-buffed. And as with the white, I'm just going to apply some black onto my tile. Oh, 
I'm going to use the same brush, which I've cleaned, and the same method. Rolling through. Create a line. And if I just show you, so the brush was up there. If I then did come flat here, using the flat of my brush, you can see the difference in the thickness of the smile line. It doesn't matter on this one because I'll be filling that in anyway. So I need to bring that a little further down. And then the same section off into thirds. And I'll change this smile line. I'll make it not quite as deep. So I haven't come down as far on those corners. And this would generally be more how a shorter nail would be. I'm rolling through. And then I'm pulling the product from the smile line to the free edge. You may have a slightly different method of doing it and how you want to grid it up. That's absolutely fine. Okay. And then I've got to just do this bit, but you can do that afterwards. And the beauty of using something like a gel paint is that you've got as long to work with it as you want before you cure it and you don't need to worry about it running. I'm pulling through. And that's black smile line. And that's going to cure for one minute in the UV lamp. Whilst that's curing, I can then show you the pink and white enhancement. So I don't need to apply a second coat of that black. So I'm able to clean that because I've used a slightly stronger pigment. I'm going to use a little bit of my cleanser on the towel. Roll my brush through to clean. Just going to move that towel to the side and then I'm going to get my matte top coat ready. I really like the look of black with a matte top coat. And pull this over. Get the free edge. Just check that the gel polish top coat is settled before you cure it. And then this one cures for one minute. Again, so I'll show you that one after I've done the demonstration on the next one. So now I'm going to show you how to create a crisp smile line with the gel polish. As we discussed earlier, the gel polish is a lot um, thinner viscosity than the gel paint, so it can be a little bit more troublesome to get successful. So I've got my gel polish here, I'm rolling it, I want to really make sure I mix those pigments. Try and avoid shaking, because shaking can 
tend to add air bubbles. So just roll it to really mix that pigment. This will also warm it through if you are working in a cold environment. So on that tile, I'm placing some of my gel polish. Now I'm already working on a cover pink background. But if you're working on natural nail, you could add a, a pink underneath. I prefer to use a pink that is slightly transparent but coloured rather than a cover pink. When I use a cover pink gel polish, what I find happens it can become very streaky and you end up having to add quite a lot of layers to get it consistent before you pick on white some. So I prefer to work directly on base coat or just use a very thin pink like this. Try and avoid pitting the white over the pink and uh, the pink over the white because even though you've spent your time getting your smile line perfect it will have ever such slight dips and then what will happen is your pink will sit in there and it will shadow. The best way I recommend to use gel polish and get the perfect smile line is by using a dotting tool. So scoop up the gel. Now we can work in exactly the same system that we did or we can do it freehand. I'm going to do this one freehand just to demonstrate a different technique that you can combine any of those techniques and use with different mediums to suit you. So I'm just going to start in the middle and place a dot so I know where to start. You can also do exactly the same for your corner points so you know where to finish. So from here, I'm just gliding this dotting tool along the nail tip backwards and forwards. And you can see it gives a really good coverage and I just, where I've just drawn through with that dotting tool, you can see how this is a much more self-leveling product. By the time we go to the other side, that will have self-leveled. And then from this side, you don't have as much time to play with gel polish because of this self-leveling fact, so do try and work a little bit quicker. If you do find that your gel is running too much as you're working what you can do is do one nail at a time and freeze cure it as you're working so you would do one smile once you're happy with it get the customer to put their hand in the lamp for even just for a couple of seconds it will stop the product from moving whilst you then work on the other hand and then vice versa and you can swap I'm just tidying up anywhere that I think needs it. Don't forget to cap the free edge. And using exactly the same technique as with the previous nails, you can take your um, cleaner tool and tidy up the smile line, or again, the same with your brush. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to cure that in the lamp for 30 seconds. And this is the matte black smile line. See, I really like the effect that this creates. And you can see on here, the difference between the pink and the white and you can still see how how stiff these two are compared to the others that have self-leveled a little bit over time and on this one the consistency is um it's good i don't have any see-through patches so i'm not required to need a second coat i find with this technique it prevents that which is great because that saves you time in the salon so this now i'm going to do the same and i'm going to create a shiny finish as per the first pink and white i find that shiny finish is more popular on a pink and white um, than a matte finish 
but you can also finish with putting chromes, adding a bit of glitter or bling as well, especially for your bridal clients. Let's check that self-leveled. And once you're happy with that, pop it in the lamp and cure for 30 seconds, or as per your manufacturer's instructions, whichever brand you're using. And you can see here, so this is the one with the slightly thinner viscosity gel paint, the slightly thicker viscosity gel paint, shiny finish and the matte finish. And I've just created slightly different shapes of smile lines um, because different nails will suit different ones, different texts have their own style. If you're ever unsure of what smile line to create on a client, if you actually look at their cuticle zone, you can use that and follow that as a guide and mimic that and that will always flatter that particular client's nail shape. And the final one is the one with the gel polish. That gave you some really good tips to learn um, when using gel systems and perfecting your smile lines. Amazing, thank Katie. Thank you so much for showing us through um, your demo. I'm a big fan of the, the matte black. It looks really good. We're That's now... one of my favourites as well. I'm just stopping my video just to turn it round. Just bear with me. Brilliant. We're going to move on to the Q&A section now. So if you do have any uh -huh. questions for Katie, then please do send them through because we've got some time now to go through them and um, we've had a few questions as well if we can re-watch the video later and yes you can it will be available on our, <coughs> available on our Facebook page and also on YouTube as well afterwards if you want to watch it again. Katie thank you so much um, we've got a few questions through. Um, okay. What, what have you used to attach the tips to the stands? Blue tack. Blue so just um so this stand here so um this is a crystal nails one and um, it comes with five little stands and the um nail tips are just adhered with sorry light issues um they're, they're just adhered with blue tack and um, you can also use the double-sided glue dots um or the little um like the little card dots that you can use as well brilliant and what is your favourite brand for white? Do you have any particular brands that you like? So the the thinner viscosity gel paint that I then used there was the Wildflowers one. Um, that is an American brand. So it's a little bit harder to get over here. You, um, you can order it to the UK. Um, alternatively, the, the black that I used um, is the crystal nails art gels which is the was the thicker viscosity and um, crystal nails also do a royal gel which is the same th uh, viscosity as the wildflowers one um, and the gel paint that i used is the um it's the chat perfect match so uh oops, sorry lighting i could probably turn that off now um so it doesn't want to show it it's uh yeah the chat's a uh, perfect match and you can get that from ASSU nail supplies um in ireland that's my favorite gel polish for competitions for creating smile lines and i would create them with that same technique as well brilliant and um we've had a question about the brush that you use as well what brand was that uh the was fine few, line yeah the fine line brush um that was a uh, hazel dixon precision one brush so I like that one and um, also the gel art one, which is a little bit smaller if you do prefer a smaller um, head. So if I just pop them, you can see. So this is the one I use today. Um, and then that one is a much smaller um, brush as well, which I do like to use. Amazing. Um, similar question from Cart. Um, they'd like to know what was the material that you used to clean the brush? Uh, just um, a nail wipe. Um, so these ones are the soft landings ones. I usually just use 
this small nail lymph free white pads um, and some cleanser just um, gel gel cleanser brilliant um, would you always mat the nail before doing a French as well uh, yes I, I would so if I was doing it on gel polish for example let's say I had used my pink um, what you're left with is you are left with your dispersion layer so I always just would take a lymph free wipe or something like this um, and I would just dry wipe over it just to remove the excess dispersion layer. The reason I choose to do that is because I then find when I put my white on it doesn't bleed into the pink. If you don't remove that dispersion layer I find it can bleed into the pink um, and then you don't end up with such a crisp smile line, which is one of the reasons I do tend to favour just using the base coat and the white, so I don't have to worry about that. Amazing. And a couple more questions we've got. Um, what were the brand names um, that you used for the pink, Katie? Uh, the pink um, was the same. So the, the pink... Um, is the uh, it's the Le Chat perfect match it's called pink pink clarity so it it does look like a funny color it looks really quite bright um but it's just it's like a tinted almost like a tinted moisturizer but a tinted pink for the nail plate so it's quite a nice color um and that's the same as the white there flawless white amazing and madeline would like to know how do you remove your gels and what do you use to do so so it depends which gels that you're referring to. Um, gel polish is, I, I would uh, file off the top coat, so um, remove the top coat with a 180 grit nail file. Then I would um, wrap that up with uh, some acetone in the foils and leave that on 15-ish minutes. It very much does depend on your brand that you're using to the soak off and removal time. Um, and then the gel paints, um, our file off so depending what it was on top of so let's say it was on top of an acrylic enhancement I would again take a 180 grit file I would file the smell line and color off which there's very little of that actually on so it won't take you that long I would file that off then I would potentially do an infill then um, or then soak off the acrylic enhancements if they were being removed as well amazing and what are some of the common problems you or common mistakes that you see nail techs making when they're doing smile lines? So with smile lines, I, I find one overthinking, I think, is one of the things. So that's why I like to break it up into a grid system and it's a lot easier to try and do it. I think a lot of techs fear having to suddenly do it completely freehand. Um, and so I think with that, then you can have a lot of problems when you're overthinking it then um, and worrying and panicking and it's even using that system if I you know had my brush and and I, I slipped a little bit down there and I had a line just by being able to well, just by being able to use that pen or a brush dipped in your cleanser it will take 10 seconds just to wipe round and clean it so I find you know you don't just don't overthink it and it will be okay amazing and as we're kind of i guess we're all looking forward to reopening um and what do you think that clients will want when salons reopen again do you think there will only be, be any big trends that people will be asking for in the salon i actually can see clients going back to quite basic i think they've been without them for quite so long they even just your your one plain colour um, I think time wise is an element of that for text being in less contact and the same for the clients um, and I think they'll just just having something rather than nothing um, they'll they'll be particular fans I think of just like the nice nudes and colours like that definitely people will be keen to have their nails back to their former glory again yes have you got any ideas for alternative French um, styles that people can do in the salon as well? Yeah, so I love like where I did the black ones and, and things like that. And, and what I think is, is nice on an alternative French is where you can do, um, it's a small line like this, but you can break it up as well. So 
you know, you could have a gap in here or we could do black and white. I really, I, I like monochrome, I like black and white. Um, if anyone who's got my brand or seen my brand note, I like the clean colours of, of monochrome and black and white. So by having um, uh, black and white, I think that looks really nice together, half black, um, and then you could create a line there, you cure your black, and then you could do the other side as then white, and that looks quite quite nice as well, something a little bit different. Great stuff. Um, I know that a lot of people were following along um, in the demo as well, so please do share um, what you created today and tag us in it, we'd love to see. But Katie, yeah. thank you so much for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure, and thanks for showing us all your tips and tricks. Thanks for inviting me. It's great to have you. Thanks, everyone. See you soon. Thank Bye. you, everyone. Hope you enjoyed. Bye.